This is not a top 10 list. This is not a top 20 list. This is a top 30 list. And it will be listed from number 30 to number 1. Because today in the Cult of Cinema, we are looking at seven films and the top 30 list for seven releases. Before we start here, I want to hit some ground rules first. So no like big box special edition. So Blood of Dracula, I'm sorry, you can't be considered into this list. As well as stuff like all Hans B. Hours of Christopher Lee set, their box sets, they would be in a separate list. And we'll do a, a ranking of them sometime this month. However, I'm going to go from the uh, from 30 to uh, basically to 20 to 10. We're going to do them in blocks of 10. And uh, you'll see what my top list is and hopefully while you're looking at this it'll give you some ideas of what you want to get during the severance sale because here's the thing for a severance sale especially if you live outside of the u.s here's the one really important thing you should know this works best if you hit the free shipping threshold if not it's going to cost you a bunch for shipping severin don't exactly have the greatest like shipping so you want to grab a bunch of seven releases when you do and that's why I thought a top 30 rather than a top 20 or top 10 would be the best way to go. So here we go. From number 30 to number 20. Number 30, we have RoboWar. Uh, it's a cool little film that's kind of part RoboCop, uh, part... Uh, yeah, part RoboCop, part the Terminator. It's, it's a fun little weird, strange film. By uh, Claudio Fagasso, Rosella Drudy, directed by Bruno Mattei. This will not be the last time you see these names on this list. But number 30, Robor. If you like the cheese factor I tear and stuff, you're going to love this film. Number 29, we have Jack the Ripper. This was a movie that got me to start buying from the Severn Cells in the first place. It is an older black and white film with a splash of color in a very important spot. Uh, this is really well done. And it had a, this one here had a bonus DVD on it when it initially came out with the European cut of the film on here as well. There are three cuts of the film, a UK version, a US version, and a European cut with naughty bits. So uh, definitely one worth checking out. The great auto commentary there too. In 28th spot, and I know people are going to be surprised this one is down so far, especially since it is such a good film. It is All the Colors of the Dark by Sergio Martino. This is a great jello. It stars Edwidge Fennec, uh, George Hilton, Susan Scott. So it's got the greatest... People from uh, from Jallos right here by Sergio Martino, who was right up there, right alongside uh, D'Argento and Lucio Fulci as the greatest Jallo filmmakers of all time. In 27th position, we have The Devil's Reign. I really dig this film. It's got William Shatner, Ernest Borgnine, Eddie Elbert. I guess I'm reading off the back because there's so many names. Uh, Keenan Wynn, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Skerritt, Ida Lupina, John Travolta. The William Shatner a aspect of it kind of makes sense because uh, Halloween. <laughs> the face, like there's a sequence with William Shatner. It looks almost like the Michael Mars mask. Anyway, it's really good. There's some great special features on here as well, and uh, including an interview with a, the high priest and priestess of the Church of Satan. I kid you not. In 26th place is, what is this? This doesn't exist. This isn't a thing, right? It's Cruel Jaws. Yes, yes, I do have the novelization as well. Um, in a movie that kind of got them in a little bit of trouble, uh, but this is so much fun. I love shark exploitation, and I really am a big fan of Rebecca McHenry. Uh, she's done some great podcast work. She worked with Fangoria, too, and she's a very big fan of aquatic horror. There's an interview with her on here that's really, really good. Uh, so, Cruel Jaws, if you can find a way to get this one, maybe at a convention or something, definitely check it out. And the 25th spot, we have Werefina Girls Dormitory. Seems pretty kind of crazy, eh? But this one here uh, actually is pretty damn good. Especially considering this is the only time you're, the uncut version's ever been released. We've got the bonus soundtrack here as well. And for uh, Jallo aficionados, this movie here was written by the great Ernesto Gastaldi, who's written some of the best jowls of all time. And I had a lot of fun with Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory, way more than I should have for a movie that was named Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory. 
Uh, there's a Nostra Gustadi interview on here, as well as a commentary, uh, which uh, is worth checking out. And what's really neat, and I love the fact that they did this, that this here actually has a uh, photo comic in here. So in Italy, they would do these photo comics. And over here in North America, we would get them in the 80s as photo romance. So, and so you'd see a lot of like actors from Jowls and stuff in these photo romance magazines. My uh, cousin used to get a lot of these. So I would see people like Michael Brandon like in, uh, in these magazines. And so later on when you see them in, uh, in films, it's, it's kind of amazing. And uh, in uh, 24th position, we have Zombie 3. I, I dug this one right here. It uh, is it as good as Zombie, uh, you know, Zombie, the Luch Vulture Zombie or, 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 no, it's not. But this is a, this is a ton of fun. And again, it is it is directed sort of by Lucio Fulci, but kind of directed by other people as well, including Bruno Mattei. Uh, Claudio Fragasso worked on this one. And in a 22nd place, we have Zombie 4. Why do I have Zombie 4 before Zombie 3? I don't know, actually. I just, I like both of these. Uh, for what they were, and I could these could actually switch around in um, in different spots, but that's the spot we're running in for now. In 20, 20, no, in 30, 21st place, we have right here House of Lost Women. It is a really good Jess Franco film, and it's one that I uh, definitely recommend. Now, this one d is during his 80s period, where he was getting a, more, a bit more introspective, and some of his stuff, I think, did have a lot more of the adult type stuff in it. It's not, this is not a triple X film, but you know, there are soft aspects to it. Uh, but it also had a lot of like introspection and I felt that he did some of his uh, best work in between uh, some of the, some of the, you know, some of that other stuff that you see there. Great stuff. In the uh, spot we have Patrick still lives. Uh, not a lot of features on this one, sadly, but it is a great little film. It is the, I'm going to say the, the sequel, sequel, mockwell uh, to Patrick. It is done in Italy. And the original Patrick with Richard Franklin, it was an Australian film, and it, ba it was based on uh, this character of Patrick who was in a coma but had telekinesis. In this one here, it is a guy that gets hit with a Coke bottle, goes into a coma, and has sexy telekinesis. Because, oh, you Italians... We love you so. That is from number 30 right up to number uh, 21. Now let's go to the 20s. All right, now for the 20s. In the 20th spot, we have a excellent documentary called That Sexploitation. It basically deals with the era of uh, cinema when they were doing like nudie cuties and reels and stuff like that before X-rated films became a thing. This movie actually ends uh, where when X-rated films start. So. It's, it's not dealing with X-rated stuff. It's dealing with the uh, the precursor to that, the more innocent uh, stuff. We have it's done by director Frank Henlotter, who uh, who hosts it. He has David F. Friedman there, and who does an amazing job telling some great stories. Definitely worth recommending. There's over three and a half hours here of sex exploitation shorts from Something Weird archives. Fun stuff to check out. In uh, the number nineteenth spot, we have Nightmare Castle. This is a great one with, from Barbara Steele. So it's Nightmare Castle is a lot of fun, but what even makes this even better? We got Castle Blood and Tear Creatures from the Grave. So we got three films on here. Um, HD transfers for uh, for each of these films, by the way. Interviews with Barbara Steele's, audio commentary with Barbara Steele, featurettes, just a lot of really great stuff and definitely something worth pick, picking up. In the number 18 spot, we have House on Straw Hill with an asterisk. This would probably be in the top 10 if it was this specific version. Because what is this specific version? Sticker right there. Strictly limited edition. First 3,000 copies contains the bonus disc band the saddest videos, which is a great documentary on video nasties. By the way, none of my uh, seven DVDs got into this list. This is all Blu-rays. If DVDs were up in here, then two of the top 10 spaces, or at least one of them would have been taken up by the uh, Video Nasties documentaries that they put out because those are amazing and everybody should own them. But this one here had this band, the Saddest Videos documentary right here. 
when uh, when we picked it up, we were so glad to uh, to see that it that it was included. That I breathed such a sigh of relief, and I got so excited when I opened this up. This was the same year that I got for Christmas the amazing Alfred Hitchcock set. But I was so excited about the Band of Saddest Videos uh, documentary that when I opened up my Alfred Hitchcock set, I was like, oh, this is really cool. But my better half's like, I don't think you like the Hitchcock set because you're so excited about the House on Straw Hill one. I like them equally. It's just I didn't expect that to be in there at the time. In the 17th place, we have Absurd, a really cool release, and my favorite of these. This is seen as a spiritual successor uh, to Anthropopicus. Also with the same, you know, actor George Eastman on, in here as well, who, who wrote uh, a lot of the uh, the works that he acted in. But I think this is actually better than Anthropopagus. I know I'm saying it, it's, it's sacrilege, but tis my opinion. Uh, and I just really enjoyed this. Edmund Perdue, Perdue is in this as kind of the the Donald Pleasance type of character because this is pretty much Halloween two before Halloween two existed. I, I'm not joking with that. And it's really well done. There's some hilarious sequences in there that you look for a. Uh, Kind of a quick sort of cameo, but important cameo, from uh, Michel Suave, uh, the director of Stage Fright and the guy with the with the steel mask and demons, because he is in here and it is in kind of in a in a hilarious scene. In 16th spot, we have the Killer Crocodile set, and yes, it is the Killer Crocodile set because it has both parts one and part two for uh, Killer Crocodile, and these are a lot of fun. Uh, I couldn't put this one any lower, but I couldn't put this one any higher either. Maybe with a few more features I could have. But either way, really, really great stuff. And I recommend that you check this out. If you like the killer creature movies, you're going to love this. In 15th place, we have Lost Souls, The Doomed Journey of Richard Stanley's Island Dr. Moreau. And no matter how you feel about Richard Stanley, this is a really good documentary. Um, this is a three-disc House of Pain edition. And this is, a, this is the edition that I do recommend you get because you get along with it the H.G. Wells files, which gives you a 1929 version of the Island Dr. Moreau, a German version of it, uh, that at the time was kind of newly discovered. H.G. Uh, Wells on film featurette, and we get a bonus three, which is a CD-ROM, which has um, Richard Stanley reading the Island Dr. Moreau. So uh, the documentary, by the way, is utterly fascinating. It's something you can watch over and over again, and is a brilliantly looking, very in Incredible set. So, I'm going to count this out. In 14th place, I'd count. I did. <clears throat> we have Shocking Dark. A uh, really fun one with Greta Goretta in here. And of course, directed by Bruno Mattei, written by Claudio Fragasso and Rosella Drudy. I told you those names are going to come on here a bit. This one is a lot of fun. It is kind of a Terminator Aliens type of film. It's, it starts out like it's going to be like Aliens. It ends up like it's going to be like Terminator. But all of it is fun, fun, fun. Shocking Dark's a great one to watch. In 13th place, we have Jess Franco's Bahia Blanca. If you were lucky enough to get this release, this one was a very limited number release, then congratulations because this is one of his best films and I utterly love this one. I've watched this one several times. It is, again, one of his 80s films, but it's also one of his personal films. If you've gotten these Stephen Thrower books, and I do recommend that you, if you're a Jess Franco fan, that you have both volumes in your collection because they are utterly fantastic, then you're going to want all the Franco films. But these here, 80s, what started as the Franco 6, but has since been expanded on, uh, they've been putting in some great stuff. I grab the Francos whenever I can because I never know when one's going to go to print. This one went out of print the weekend that it was out and was rarely seen since. Unlike a lot of Severn stuff which come back in again, this one didn't. In 12th place, we have Penelope Spears' The Boys Next Door. A great little film with Max Maxwell Caulfield and, Mar and, Char Mar Sheen, and Charlie Sheen. If you've never seen this movie, I don't want to give them, it, it's a fantastic, they're spree killers. It's a fantastic film. Uh, you should definitely check this one out. Uh, screen written by Glenn Morgan and uh, and James Wong, you know we you know we do Final Destination, you know X Files. But this this is well well done. I'm a really big fan of Maxwell Caulfield. I'm a big fan of Grease too, uh, so uh, that's re what initially got me to watch this film. But um, seeing it and seeing just how well it was done, definite recommendation. An 11th spot, we have one that won't be on the box set that's coming out. 
So you would have to buy this one separately. I don't think this one's going to be on the Laura Gemser set. This is Emmanuel and Francois. It is actually a remake of an earlier film. But Emmanuel and Francois is a really well done film. We have the incredible George Eastman in this one here. Um, it stars uh, Rose Marie Lent and Carol Ann. Carol Ann, right? Yep. So uh, if you've never seen this, definitely recommend that you, uh, that you check this one out. It's got a great soundtrack, a very bleak story. And with that, we are hitting into our top 10 releases. In 10th place, we have Skinner. This is a really good release. And what makes this one go over the top and puts into the 10th place isn't just the fact that I really enjoyed this film with Ted Raimi, Ricky Lake, and Tracy Lords, but the features on this one are incredible. Each feature on this deals with a different portion of the film. We have an interview with the director. Um, we have an interview with uh, the star of the film, Ted Raimi. We have an interview with the screenwriter. We have an interview, a very important interview, with the person that edited the film. Each one takes on a different aspect. See, the director of this movie, well, his girlfriend was Heidi Fleiss. Yep, that Heidi Fleiss, the Hollywood madam. If you have don't know who that is, look it up, because he is even more infamous than she is. And that's talked about on here as well. So not only is this a really good film, but the features just put it that much more of the top. Put it into the top ten. In uh, ninth place, we have Tales of the Uncanny. Now, this is one that I was nervous about first. This was made during that dark period. We were all staying at home. So this is literally a documentary made about Portmanteau, the anthology films, on Zoom. What's really great about this edition is that this is a special edition of it, so you got extra, you got an extra bonus uh, films on here. So if you bought this one initially, it came with uh, the film. Uh, I think it was eerie, was it eerie tales and unusual tales? But if you got the the special limited edition of it, then you also got the 1960 film Masters of Horror. So you got the documentary talking about the, the best Pormanto films of all time, best anthology films of all time. Uh, you have like, a, a, they do a list of their, not to the top films, but the top segments from top films. Then after that, you get two bonus anthology films on here. And if you bought the limited edition disc, you get a third bonus anthology film on here. So just some really incredible stuff. Honestly, that could have probably gone higher. In eighth place, we have Another film by uh, Claudio Fragasso, written and directed by him under his American pseudonym of Clive Anderson. Now, here's the thing. When Fragasso did this movie, this was going to be his big movie, his piece de resistance. He did it with, of course, his wife, Rosella Drudy. But... The producers behind his back hired his good friend Bruno Mattei to come in and shoot some additional scenes, put some more gore and a little bit more sleaze into the film. It actually ended up kind of breaking the friendship for a while. The film is Night Killer. It's a really fun film, and it stars Doctor Strange. No, no. Not Benedict Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange. It uh, stars Peter Hooten, who was in the 1970s TV Doctor Strange film. This... This is what the killer looks like. Trust me, you have to see this movie. In seventh place is Sergio Stavaletti's Wax Mask. This was supposed to be a Lucio Fulci film. Unfortunately, Lucio Fulci passed away before this film was able to be done. Sergio Stavaletti came in. He was the special effects artist that worked on so many of Argento's films and other people's work. See, Sergio Stavaletti would be the Tom Savini of Italy, and his work was great. If you've seen opera and you've seen uh, that the uh, keyhole shot scene, that that's him. The if you've seen Steindahl syndrome and you saw the the shot through the you know when the girl gets shot in the head and you see through the through the bullet hole, that that's him as well. He does some amazing effects. I thought he did a great job this one here. And even like to put it above that, the features on this one are insane. They are good, and there are a couple here that may bring a tear to some people's eye. I'm not saying it brought a tear to my eye, but maybe it did. In sixth place, we have a documentary. 
and a good one, a really, really good one. All the colors of Jello. This, my friends, is a fantastic one to check out. It has a, on the first disc, you get a full length feature documentary on Jello films. Hopefully you've seen Jello films before because this is going to spoil quite a few. Um, yeah, there's over four hours of Jello trailers on here as well. There is an interview with John Martin, editor of Jello Pages. And there's audio commentary by Ket Ellinger, which is fantastic. And if it stopped there, it would be great. It would be amazing to have. You have a documentary. You've got four hours of trailers. You've got interviews. You've got audio commentaries. But it doesn't stop there. No, because on disc two, we have a 91-minute trailer compilation called Criminal about the Kremi films, including an interview about uh, Kremi films as well, kind of the precursor to the Jello. And on disc three, because there's a third disc, and because it's... <laughs> Uh, it's it's Severin. You know you gotta have your CD soundtrack, and we got the strange sounds of Bloodstained Films, with some great work on here, and uh, just incredible, incredible uh, soundtracks. And in fifth place, we have Lucio Fulci's The Devil's Honey, one of my personal favorites of his films, because it showed that he wasn't just a gore guy, uh, and you know some people. He could do other things as well. And this one deals with grief and the nature of uh, and the nature of it, the nature of grief. It's really well done. It's got Brett Halsey in here. Corinne Cleary is in this one here. Such a good film. If you've never seen this one here, I definitely recommend it. There's some great features on it. See, this was made before by somebody else. He actually wrote this the script for this film. Somebody else made it. He didn't like what they did, and so he went out took the script and remade it again. It's The Devil's Honey. Strong recommendation on that one. In number fourth place, in fourth place, we have The Changeling, uh, our first Canadian film to hit this list, I think, right now. And that is a fantastic film by Peter Medock. If you've never seen The Changeling, it's one of the best ghost stories ever made. George C. Scott stars in this one. And you got to be a scary ghost if George C. Scott is, uh, is not the scariest part of the film. Because he's usually the scariest part of the film. Uh, but this is a really, really good film. It's a fantastic score. And luckily, you do get the score here. And this is one of these movies. You may not care about scores all the time when it comes to this. You will when it comes to this film. It's a fantastic score, and I've listened to it quite a bit. In third place, we have The Incredible Next of Kin. I could teach a class on this film. In fact, I, uh, I, I might. This movie here is it's an Australian film. And it is a great, it's so well edited. There's a great sequence, which I call the sugar, sugar cube sequence, uh, that uh, you just got to see uh, to believe. It's just so well done, so well paced. There's such great cinematography in this film. I love everything about this movie. John Jarrett, long before he became the infamous guy from Wolf Creek, uh, is the romantic lead in this movie. And it is a really good film. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend that this be one that you check out and get in the next sale. In second place is one of my favorites, because I'm a huge folk horror fan, and that is Blood on Satan's Claw. It's one that I've watched a few times. Now this is a limited edition release. It usually comes out during the sale, uh, and it's not usually available any other time. So it's never on sale. But this one is a really great release. There's at least two audio commentaries on here. There's a bunch of featurettes. And see, all the, you know, all the Hans Hours set came about because of this. The All the Hans Bauer's documentary, the big long documentary, was supposed to initially be like a 10 or 15 minute featurette on this here release. Uh, when when uh, Kayla Janice got uh, starting, like going down the rabbit hole of folk horror, what ended up was an amazingly long, incredibly well done and critically lauded documentary that gave us one of the bo best box sets of all time. Thanks to the foresight of David Gregory, he let her, rather than say, come on, we need that 15-minute featurette, he said, go with what you're, go with your gut, make the film. She did, history was made, but initially it was going to be on this, what I consider one of the great folk horror films of all time, right up there with The Wicker Man. I cheated with number one, because it's two releases, but they do go together. I did take out the cases for these, they have like black slip covers on them. But I wanted you to see the unadulterated art. So here we go. This is definitely the number one spot. This is She Killed in Ecstasy and Vampire Lesbos. They are two films by Jess Franco. Two great films by Jess Franco. I think Vampire Lesbos is my favorite out of the two, but I like them both. 
They starred Soledad Miranda, who was the original muse for Jess Franco. Now, sadly, Soledad Miranda died in a car accident very early. She did not live very long. But you can see some of her great work and the uh, just this sense of there's a specialness. Uh, she has a, it's hard to explain, a je ne sais quoi. She has it. She's someone that you know that if she had been around longer, she would have continued to make some incredible films. Great work, and I love both of these films. Great release, and look at this. Just look, again, look at the artwork on this here. When you can, there's a, a, a cardboard slipcase with the titles on here, but they had the foresight to say, you know what, the artwork on these here are so good. And by the way, this, this blue one here, that's the artwork for one of the, uh, one of the Stephen Thorpe books uh, by just, you know, Beatrice Franco. It was so good. It said that we're going to you know, have this slip here so that we can take it off and just really showcase this art because this art is that good. And these films are that good. We got a CD on here with music from, uh, from three Jess Franco films that she worked on, including the last one, The Devil Came from Akasava. We have a alternate Spanish language bootleg uh, version of uh, Vampire Lesbos on here. Which for me, by the way, Vampire Lesbos is his best vampire film. Better than Count Dracula, which he did with Christopher Lee. And there you go. That is my top 30 Severin releases. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making this video. And we'll be talking more Severin here during the, uh, during the Halfway to Black Friday month. hope you're enjoying the Halfway to Black Friday month so far. We'll be talking many things Severin, many things Vinegar Syndrome. And we'll be diving into Make Flicks as well. Because they usually have a, a big surprise sale during the... Uh, during Half Head Black Friday as well. I'll see you soon, right here again, in the Call to Cinema. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, because it do does help with the channel. And uh, comment down below, letting me know what your favorite seven releases are. Some that uh, that you think I should have put on here, that I didn't put on here. And maybe you want to look at the films that I got here and put them in your own specific order. Either way, I look forward to hearing from you. Hey there. You know two films that I almost made the list but never quite did? No Way Home, fantastic film by the way, and Horror Party Beach. Recommendations on those two as well, but uh, they just didn't quite make the list, but they almost did. See you next time.